Okay, hi, welcome Spartans. Uh, I'm Coach Matt Maida, the Athletic Director at San Antonio High School. And our purpose of our discussion here today is to get ready to return to sports at San G. Uh, with me today, I have our head football coach and head track coach, Rich McClure. I also have our certified athletic trainer, health professional, Denise Robertson. And I have Miss Nareda Rubio, our our parent representative, and she's actually a parent representative on the District Athletic Strategic Planning Committee. And she's had a son who graduated uh, from San G, played on our CF Championship football team and in college playing football now. And she has a, a daughter who was a cheerleader for us. And then she's got another son that's about to come to us too. So Nareda, thank you for joining us today as well. So our main purpose today is to go through our return to sports plan. Uh, we've been working on it the last couple of weeks and so we're gonna do a slide presentation to kind of explain everything to you. Um, at the end of each slide, we'll pause in case anybody's got any additional things to add to it or Mrs. Rubio has any questions that she might have as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go straight into our slide presentation. And here we go. So uh, the main thing with this, just to let you guys know, is this has been a district effort. Um, all six high schools have been involved in putting the plans together and working with the Board of Education and the Cabinet. Um, all the recommendations and guidelines that we've come up with are based upon the California Department of Public Health guidelines, the National Federation of High School Sports guidelines, and of course the California Interscholastic Federation guidelines, CIF. On October 20, we had our board meeting and the Board of Education voted to support the return to sports in San Marino School District um, beginning in November. And two days later, we had a meeting with um, interim superintendent, Dr. Harold Volkemer, as well as assistant superintendent, uh, Dr. Sandra Rodriguez and director of youth services, uh, Dr. Marlene Bikendova, as well as some other people from the district office with all the athletic directors. Uh, in that meeting that we had, as far as the summary goes, Dr. Volkemer was um, explicit in we must follow the rules. Um, if we don't follow the rules, we're gonna put everybody in jeopardy, uh, whether it's a team or a school or whoever it may be, uh, we've gotta follow the rules. We've worked really hard at putting this together. So we need to make sure that we do what's been asked for everybody. Um, obviously this is voluntary. This is returning to sports physical conditioning. Uh, people may opt out at any time, whether it be staff and or students, parents, if at any time you feel that your, your daughter's son is not safe, uh, you may opt out and, and you may decide to not participate. Just communicate that with your head coach of your sports. And obviously health and safety is the number one priority of the Board of Education um, and the, the cabinet and superintendent. So we wanna make sure, and of course the schools as well, and the coaches, uh, we wanna make sure that everybody is healthy and safety and safe. Okay, that takes us to uh, this slide. Uh, are there any questions though before we jump into this slide? No, okay, I'm gonna hand this one over to Miss uh, Denise Robertson. Go ahead, Denise. So in order to get started back on campus, it's gonna take a group effort from all of us. So for it's gonna take our coaches. They have been learning and studying and preparing um, for everybody to be back on campus. Um, they've prepared detailed practice pat, uh, plans and so we can adhere to all of our um, safety guidelines. And for the athletic trainers, we're going to support um, our coaches and our athletes and our parents to make sure that our athletes are staying safe and healthy. And then for our parents, um, we're going to ask that you learn and understand the return to sport guidelines that we're going to be going over and then also read and sign the COVID acknowledgement to support your athletes um, in uh, returning to conditioning. And then lastly, our athletes. Um, they also need to learn and understand the uh, return to sport guidelines and take it seriously. This is um, um, a very serious situation and keeping every Spartan healthy and safe um, is going to begin with our athletes. So just remember everyone's health and wellness is our number one priority for all of us. Thank you, Denise. Uh, is there any questions, Coach or Ms. Rubio? Uh, not yet. 
Okay, sounds good. We're going to go ahead and move on. I will mention this. People are wondering about the COVID acknowledgement for the parents and the athletes. It is actually in the athlete physical packet, and that athlete physical packet is listed here. Um, at, this is our SANG Athletics website. You can see it at the very bottom of the screen, www.sangorgonioathletics.org. That is our athletics website. And if you go to the tab, information and forms, it will give you all kinds of information. So the return to sports guidelines that the parents and the students will be signing in the physical packet, it is listed at this website. So you can download it and open it and read through it if you like it to read it more uh, thoroughly. Um, Theathleticclearance.com is listed here as well. And that's where you go to fill out the online athletic pa uh, paperwork. And then on this website, there is a copy of the doctor's physical form that's approved by the district as well as the insurance affidavit. So the three things that you have to turn in in order to get your athlete cleared is your athleticclearance.com confirmation page, which is at the very end of that process, the doctor's physical form and the insurance affidavit form. Those three items, uh, we were asking that people email them to Gerilyn Logan and her email will be at the very end of this presentation. Gerilyn Logan is our athletic secretary and she's tracking everything for us right now online because we're still not at school. We're still all working from home. So it's best if you can scan or take pictures, legible clear pictures of your forms and send them to Ms. Gerilyn Logan. However, you can pick up hard copies. Um, hard copies are available um, on Tuesdays in the afternoon. Um, if you go to the front of the school, the blue doors that are immediately to the left of the front office, uh, there will be a vice principal there every Tuesday afternoon and they will have copies of the physical packets to hand out uh, hard copies, and they will collect physical packets. It just understands it will slow us down a little bit if you turn it into them, because then Miss Logan has to come to school, pick them up, and take them to her home, because again, she's not working from school. So um, the last thing on this website too, is you can find the list of all of our Spartan sports, and the head coach emails um, are listed on a document at this website. Any questions, comments? All good from the panel? All right, let's go ahead and go on to our next slide here. This slide, I think I'm gonna have a Miss Denise take this one. Okay, so um, in coming back to campus, um, all of our staff are taking a course on Coronavirus 101. So all, every staff member is being trained on recognizing symptoms, how to clean and disinfect. And also the San Bernardino City Unified School District guidelines for self-assessment that every um, staff member is asked to complete every day before they um, enter campus. So over on the left side of your screen, this is kind of the five steps to help us all stay safe. Um, we've all heard them the last several months, social distancing, wear a mask, don't touch your face or your mouth or your nose. Um, and above all, if you, if you have symptoms, stay home. It's, it's not worth the risk of um, putting anybody else at risk. Yeah, one thing I'd kick in too on number four is we're definitely gonna ask that the students return home and, and the coaches as well, that you guys clean your clothes. You know, uh, if you work out hard and you, and you have sweat and you, you're doing stuff, uh, make sure that you're practicing proper good personal hygiene. You know, washing the hands, all that stuff is great too, but uh, you know, please wash your clothes as well when you uh, come home from practice. Okay, all any right. other questions or comments? Coach, go ahead. Yeah, I would kick in on number three and um, for all of us that uh, have been in, involved with sports for our entire lives, um, the one great thing about being in sports is having the opportunity to, you know, be in close contact with others. And this time is really not a time to do that. So uh, what number three is basically saying is, is that, you know, there's going to be some equipment that coaches will use um, that has to stay hands off. And it's very imperative uh, for the safety of your student athlete to do that and as well as the people that are collecting that equipment at the end of the day. So we don't want any cross touching of any of the equipment that it's there for instructional purposes. 
but it, it's got to follow the guidelines of, uh, of not uh, uh, not being touched by individuals. And I think later on in the presentation, we'll talk about how you uh, bring certain pieces of equipment to practice and or you don't and, and how you're prepared for those situations. But this number three really talks to the fact that you come and you're going to be prepared to, to participate and you're not going to have the opportunity to touch things that are going to be touched by others. Thank you, Coach. All right, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this next slide, we're going to let Miss Denise take as our trainer. So as we get back on campus and we are starting conditioning, there's other things um, besides COVID that we have to um, take a look at. We have been exercising for a while, so um, worried about getting acclimized back to um, training, um, adequate hydration. We're monitoring the air quality um, and the temperature, um, as well as um, what we're normally looking for, sudden cardiac arrest, concussion, sickle cell episodes. Um, so even though we're back to just conditioning, we are looking um, at a lot of different areas. Yeah, definitely. Just because we're in COVID doesn't mean we shut down everything else, right? So well, we're gonna still do our same due diligence that we've always done. Okay, um, this one right here is about the fall sports. The fall sports are slightly different. You'll notice that girls water polo, which is normally a winter sport, and boys volleyball, which is normally a spring sport, have been moved into the fall. And some other sports like girls tennis is no longer in the fall, it's in the spring. So these are the fall sports that CIF has dictated for this particular school year. Cross country, sideline cheer, low contact sports, volleyball, water polo are moderate contact sports, and the higher contact sports of being football and competitive cheer. You know, those dates are set for games and stuff, competitions to really begin in December. Uh, but as we show you this next slide on the phases, um, it's all gonna be dependent upon where we are at within the county with respect to being purple, red, you know, orange, yellow, whatever status we are that the county tells us uh, we're in will control what we can actually do. Any, any questions from this one? What about the spring sports? When does that start? Yeah, so the other sports, like the other winter sports or spring sports like soccer, basketball, baseball, softball, track, swimming and all them, those other sports are all going to be considered spring sports, and they are not going to start right now. Um, you know, due to us trying to do social distancing and controlling the number of people on campus at any one time, but we are only going to have the fall sports begin right now in November. Uh, we'll be looking at the spring sports starting with their conditioning um, in probably January when we return from Christmas break, because then their sports actually start up in February and March for their competitive dates. Okay. Okay, that takes us to our phases. So they've broken the sports down into returning by phase one, two, three, four, as you kind of see. But we're really just focusing on phase one right now. Phase one is just really conditioning individual skill drills. Uh, there's no sharing of equipment. There's no sharing of balls. Um, it, it's specifically individual development and conditioning. That's what we're starting with on November 16th uh, for those sports that are ready to go. Um, the other phases, you know, the, for lower contact, full practice, as you move on, modified practice, competition, um, et cetera, um, that's all going to be dependent upon what we're told by the county health department in the state. So as they give us the green light to move forward into those other phases, we will, but we will not move forward until we're given the uh, permission by the county and the Board of Education. Okay. Coach, you want to start off on this one here? Yeah, I, I just had a comment about um, the last two slides. Just make sure that everybody understands that, you know, the competition phase and our conditioning phase, those dates are different. So we're trying to start our conditioning phase in a limited situation right away, November 16th. But the competition things um, are down the road just a little bit. So it gives us a little bit of time to be able to work out all the situations as far as getting our physicals done, getting everybody prepared, and getting in start of, of reconditioning everybody that's basically been out uh, for the last eight months. And so just, just make sure that everybody understands that. Um, as we move into our specifics of our, um, 
our practice schedules and our, uh, the, our startups, understand that all of our athletes are gonna be put into pods. And so each coach, there'll be a 10 to one ratio where one coach will have only those 10 kids. And this is really important because of the contact um, checks that we have to make and assessments of any potential things that would come up later on that those same people are in close proximity with each other during this conditioning phase. And so by limiting the number of athletes that might be around each other or uh, interacting with one coach uh, during this conditioning phase is very, very important. And there's a lot of things that, that come uh, with that uh, scenario because of getting kids onto campus and getting into their activities, doing it safely and then getting them out. Uh, the big thing for us is uh, I think all, all the fall coaches have different perspectives, but athletes have to have their, their athletic clearance, their physical forms, their insur insurance affidavit. All that has to be cleared um, prior to the start of any kind of conditioning program. So an athlete may be assigned to a pod, but if they're not cleared, they cannot show up and expect to participate. They also can't just show up with their paperwork and say, here it is, I wanna jump into those groups because there are quite a few protocols that go with the, the, the uh, making sure that everybody is where they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to be signed in, how they're supposed to progress to their areas, how they're supposed to do their activities and then, then leave their, their uh, particular activity of, um, areas. So it's really very important uh, that they get all this stuff done. You know, in the past, maybe somebody um, didn't get all their paperwork done or they were waiting on different situations. They might have been able to attend practice just to watch. That's not going to happen. Um, everybody that's there is essential to their pod and they must be cleared with all these components um, of their clearance forms. The uh, do I have the staggered sports practices? Yeah, Coach, we've got a, the next slide actually will kind of be more specific, but we do stagger our sports practice schedules, again, to try to limit exposure between pods and between sports and kids. The, the biggest thing here is, and um, our um, parent can speak to these, uh, Nareda can speak to these situations, but because of the social distancing, each one of the sports that we start with uh, in the next week or so, they're staggered in their starts. And everyone has to know where they're gonna go, where they're gonna check in, um, what procedures are gonna go through that process. And so the head coaches are gonna be talking a little bit about how, um, what their times are, where they're supposed to meet and so on and so forth. We have some information for that as well. Okay, so in my understanding, um, Every student has a specific, depending on sport, has a, spe a specific drop off area, right? Correct. So they have to follow the guidelines, the signs to what area they have to go to. So cheer has a different spot. Um, every sport has a different position and spot where they're gonna practice. So um, when it comes down to dropping off, I don't know if it's the next one or so yeah, that's actually coming up. Uh, Ms. Rubio, we have four different drop-off points depending upon which sport they're in. And yeah, we'll, we'll hit each one and show the parents where they'll be dropping them off for that. Just uh, also notice on this one that, you know, when the kids do get dropped off, oh, and the staff as well too, everybody's going to be screened every single day. We're going to take temperature checks on every athlete, every staff member uh, before they're allowed to participate. There'll also be the visual and self-assessment questions to go through. You know, whether you've had coughing, sneezing, you know, in any of the symptoms of, of COVID um, prior to. So you should be doing a self-assessment before you even come to, to uh, school. And then when you arrive, we'll go through those questions again with everybody as they show up. Um, the last thing is there is cleaning and disinfecting facilities nightly by the custodians. And the staff is also being trained on how to use the district uh, products for cleaning and disinfecting uh, equipment. Although I understand the very beginning, there's not much equipment being used during phase one. So this kind of talks about the staggered schedule that the coach was talking about. Uh, you'll notice the different sports at the top of the grid and the times on the left-hand side. 
Um, if the very first one we can look at here is girls volleyball here in the middle, which is in red. And you'll notice that because it's red, that means that's the entry point they will go through. Uh, purple has a separate entry point. Yellow is a different entry point, And blue is a different entry point on the stadium and, uh, and the, the staff or the campus. And we'll show you guys that on the next couple of maps. But notice that there's specific times to check in. So for girls volleyball, this first group is from 2.45 to 3 o'clock. If a player shows up after 3 o'clock, they're not going to be allowed to participate. They have to be there in that specific time window. Um, in different sports, there's different pods that can check in at different times. For girls water polo, you'll notice over here that from 3 to 3.15, there's two groups checking in. And then the third group doesn't check in until 3.15 to 3.30. And that's because we're limiting only two groups at a time coming through one point so that we can have 20 people properly socially distanced as they enter the, the facilities and then get sent to their designated areas. Um, this next slide was kind of what Mrs. Rubio was referring to. So this is for water polo and cheer. If your son or daughter is in water polo or cheer, the drop off is in the east tennis lot, the east uh, parking lot by the tennis courts. Uh, there'll be an X out there for them to come in, a table and an easy up. They'll check in and you'll also have to notice the one way arrows because of COVID. So we don't have cross traffic happening. And so they'll go into the quad coming from the parking lot, which is different from water polo. Water polo is used to going straight to the pool, but they can't go that direction because that's the opposite direction of the one-way traffic. So both water polo and cheer will have to go through the corridor by the uh, cafeteria and into the quad. Cheerleaders can then go into quad to practice. And then as they're gonna leave, they're gonna follow the same path as water polo. They've gotta go in front of the cafeteria towards the gym. From the gym, they go down between the gym and the pool area and the, the locker room area. They can enter the pool area from the locker room gates. When everybody goes to depart, they would then head north by that path, headed up past the, cap the backside of the cafeteria and the tennis courts back to the parking lot where they would then get picked up. So you notice again that it's one way traffic so as not have any crossover. And this one is for water polo and cheer. Going to the next sports, so we have three other entry points. Um, we'll start with the red one. There's red X is in the upper left-hand corner of the map. It's where the JV baseball entry is, the gate. So this parking lot is the west parking lot. It is west of the school coming off of Pacific Street. Uh, the parents can pull into the parking lot. And oh, here's another important thing is when you drop your athlete off, please don't leave right away. Make sure they are cleared to enter. Because if you know they have to have their water bottle, they have to have their, their mask, they have to not have a temperature, they have to pass the uh, COVID questions. So once they're cleared and they enter, then you you can leave. But if they don't pass those questions or they're late, uh, you've got to take them home right away. So please don't drop and, and leave your kid. Uh, wait for your kid to be cleared before you leave. So the girls volleyball will be in the west parking lot drop off, come through this gate here. You'll notice that they'll come down to this area over here, which is west of the blacktop. That's where girls volleyball will be. When they go to leave, they will go up the hill, not out the gate they came in because of cross traffic. So they'll go up the hill and they'll go down the backside and they'll go into the parking lot following these different arrows than the entry arrows. Coming over to the other side, coming off of Arden, where the, the students will be dropped off, the athletes will be dropped off for boys volleyball, football and cross country. So this yellow X is the north drive-through off of Arden. Parents, drop your kids off here on Arden. Do not come into the driveway. The driveway is strictly going to be for foot traffic, and this is where the athletes are going to be socially distanced before being checked in. Once they come to this yellow X and it's their turn, the boys' volleyball will head here onto the blacktop. They'll have the east end of the blacktop to work out on and condition. Uh, the football kids would then come in here and go towards the field. And I'll, I'll let Coach talk a little bit more about football in a second. Uh, down here, you'll notice the purple entry. The purple entry is for cross country. So when the cross country kids come, they'll be dropped off again on Arden. They'll come, they'll walk through this gate here, the south drive-through gate down by the varsity baseball and by the visitor side of the stadium. After they get checked in, they will then go down here below the field down to where the softball field area is and the varsity baseball field and the throwing area is where the cross country kids will work out. You will notice that when people exit, the exits again are one way traffic. 
So the exit is here on Arden by the walkthrough gates, not the drive-through gates. So you enter through the drive-through and the athletes will exit the stairwell gates, which are the normal stadium fan gates and wait to be picked up here on Arden. Coach, I'm gonna hand it off to you because football actually has two different gates. So go ahead and take over for football. Oh, thank you. We will end up with one, one pod group that will be assigned uh, the yellow entry. Uh, they'll come in and uh, as has been indicated, they'll come in and then they'll proceed to their uh, designated area on the field. They'll remain there socially distanced uh, from the rest of uh, the other pods that are be in activity during that time. And then there'll be two pods that'll be assigned to the purple entry uh, that will come in from the south side and they will enter the stadium uh, from that purple um, uh, designate uh, to get onto the field and then they'll go back out through the, the gate. So we'll end up with 10 athletes and a coach check in at the yellow spot and then uh, 20 uh, per day that will end up down at the purple. The big the big uh, thing is we, we want to try and get parents to not drive all the way down to that drive-in gate. Uh, there'll be a great deal of uh, traffic issues if we have everybody driving all the way down. So if you can drop off um, near the north gate and have your student athletes walk, um, it's not that far down to the purple gate, even though they're dropped off near or around the yellow gate. And hopefully that makes sense from a standpoint of just being able to get uh, a vehicle uh, traffic in and out of there so we can have a, a, an effective drop off and pick up, pick up type situation. Uh, also at the end of practice, uh, we're gonna hold, we'll hold all of our football athletes on the field in their areas, in their pods, uh, until they've been uh, notified that a parent is ready to pick them up off of Arden. Okay, thank you, Coach. Are there any other questions or comments? Um, I have a question. What sure. about the, the parents that have two athletes and they're not in the same sport? Can the parent, um, can say for example, I have someone in cheer and then I have someone else in football. Can my, um, my daughter that does cheer, can she wait for her brother if he's in football? Or do I have to pick her up and then come back and get my football player? Yeah, that's a great question. So unfortunately right now during phase one in conditioning, there are no spectators or any additional people allowed to be at the practices. And that would include siblings or parents. So we wanna make sure that only essential personnel are at the practices and limiting the number of people that are present. So yeah, when you have, if you have two more kids, uh, they need to be picked up and dropped off during those, those windows. There's 15 minute windows for drop off and pick up. And we do not want anybody um, spectating, watching, waiting at any of the practices. Um, if you have a close time where it's like only 15 minutes apart, you know, you could potentially be with your children on Arden in your car, um, you know, dropping off one and picking up the other or vice versa. But yeah, we do not want people at practices waiting and watching. I think everybody should know and understand that we're talking about potentially up to 300 student athletes. And so, you know, everybody's really got to work together. And that's why all these different entry points are, are a big factor and parents need to understand and kind of be patient to that situation because we're going, it's very fluid scenario. And obviously uh, Coach Maida has done an outstanding job of trying to variate the time so that we don't overlap that, but there are some, you know, potential downfalls. And so if you do have somebody that goes to two different times, that does create that situation. But to get 300 people in and out of this small facility, it's quite a trick. And so we need everybody's help to get that done. Yeah, very much. Thanks, Coach. This is Rubio, did that kind of answer your question? Yes. All right, great. Okay, uh, that takes us to this next one. Uh, Coach McClure, you want to start off there with number one? Uh, obviously, the, you know, we, we just got through talking about uh, the athlete check-in. Uh, there's uh, times that are assigned uh, for football. I know that all the other sports are doing the same. Uh, a position coach is going to have a, a check-in form or they're going to report to that, that particular uh, area. 
um, understand that it is imperative that uh, parents understand that we have a 15 minute window to get in and out of uh, our check-in points uh, and that you can't uh, just drop your kid uh, off, your student athlete off and then take off. There's got to be a, a process so that if there's any issues, uh, then that student athlete uh, doesn't have to stand around and wait if he has to go home or he has some kind of issue that uh, uh, needs more attention. Uh, know and understand that uh, we're not letting anybody in. Uh, we can't have any spectators. Um, there, there can't be people walking the track and, and just hanging out. Um, it's a very closed uh, facility because of, of this situation, making sure that we don't have uh, any interactions with people that are not cleared um, to be a part of our program. And that's, that's important for parents to know. I would want to know if my, my student athlete was in that situation and that, that there was good, you know, security and, and good um, clearance from a standpoint of only those people that we know and trust are in that, in that situation. Um, the late scenario for uh, student athletes um, if you show up late outside of that window, um, you're going to be asked to go home. Um, and, and the reason for it is because uh, of our tight guidelines. We, again, 300 athletes to move in and out on a daily basis, and we need everybody to be um, very succinct in showing up and, and being on time. And so just understand that if they come late, then, then they're going to be asked to, to go home. Uh, as Many of our coaches have said, I've said the same thing. Uh, basically, student athletes come dressed. They're ready to go. Uh, uh, we are moving into the winter months, which is fun for football from that standpoint because we've always had to deal with the, with the heat to start. But now uh, they're going to have to be dressed warmly, but they won't be able to bring a bag. Uh, they'll have to have their mask on. They'll have to have individual water that they will not be able to share and uh, they'll have a place designated for them uh, to drop their sweats or the layers of their clothes as we go into our, our practices will be uh, in the evening times from you know 4.30 to 6.30. So obviously it'll be a little bit cooler. And the issue is, is that we don't have locker rooms. Um, until we move through these phases that have been talked about, we won't have access to any indoor type uh, scenarios. So the the wonderful locker room facilities that we've had to being able to utilize in the past, we can't do that yet. And so understand that uh, students, when they, they bring their water, they're taking their water bottle home with them uh, and they bring it uh, on a daily basis and they won't be able to share with other people uh, and they have to be dressed and they have to be dressed appropriately. There won't be a place for them to go change their shoes. What I've asked the football guys to do is they have cleats they come in their flats, their regular tennis shoes. When they get to the field, they'll change into their cleats on the field, and then they'll reverse that when they when they get ready to go home. Miss Denise. All right. So number two, we're going to be doing daily screening of not only the staff and the coaches, but also of our athletes. But the number one thing, if you think you're sick or you've feel off, you might have a, you know, a symptom uh, that we're going to be screening for, just stay home. It's not worth the risk. Um, so, <clears throat> pardon me. So it's not the, worth the risk of getting your coach, your teammates, anybody else um, you might have in contact with getting them sick. So if you look on the left side of the screen, there's some of the symptoms. Uh, fever, cough, trouble breathing, nausea, fatigue, headache, um, loss of taste or smell, having a sore throat. Um, if you are experiencing any of those symptoms, just notify your head coach. Let them know that you won't be coming. You know, self-isolate at home until you're um, feeling better. Um, and then that'll keep us all safe and healthy. Uh, number three, the daily attendance uh, for football, it's position coaches. Um, for other sports, it may be a head coach or uh, assistant coach as well, is going to take uh, daily attendance. And uh, the form is to um, your uh, immediate left bottom. Uh, an example of that, uh, whether it's going to be a printed uh, copy or on a phone uh, document, the position coach or uh, head coach will uh, ask the, the 
the student athlete uh, where they are uh, in their particular situation, whether they are um, they're present and they feel well, uh, or they end up uh, another biggest thing that we we've struggled with this in the past. If people are absent, why were they absent? Were they sick? Um, and so it's very imperative uh, that we communicate with football. We have a huddle account which is wonderful. People can send emails and say, hey, I'm sick, I'm staying home, um, and let us know. So that way we get to that last minute of, of check-in. We're not wondering whether uh, you as an individual or a student athlete is coming for that particular day. But this is very important. We have to do this kind of check-in, uh, which is tedious. We all understand that, but at the same time, to make sure that we do contact tracing. So if somebody does get ill, that we know what group they were in, what day it happened. Uh, and then uh, what will end up happening is that whole group or pod will end up being um, uh, not allowed to come back uh, until the guidelines are, are, are reached uh, for safe uh, return to sports. So again, it's imperative, uh, just like Ms. Denise has said, you know, if you are sick, you don't feel well, stay home. Right now is not a time to push. Uh, from a standpoint of going to practice and doing those kind of things. We got to do it and we have to do it safely uh, so that we can uh, progress uh, through, uh, through this process. Um, again, uh, at the end of practice uh, for football, uh, we have a 15 minute window. Uh, we can't be in a situation where, you know, I had to run to the store or, you know, whatever the situation is and you end up leaving your student athlete uh, at practice for an extra 35, 40 minutes. Um, a position coach or another coach won't be able to leave until his whole entire uh, pod uh, has left because we can't be in a situation where, oh, we only have one or two people, then the head coach can take those situations. And then we're, we're cross-membering uh, our pods and we can't do that. Uh, so that position coach must wait until that student athlete is picked up. And so uh, prior to the start, everybody will know and make sure that they understand when the drop off is. And the critical point is that 15 minute window uh, at the end of practice uh, that those athletes can be picked up. Yeah, that was a lot of information. Thank you guys. I, I did want to stress the number three that that daily attendance forms is on a Google survey form that the coaches will be submitting electronically. And so it'll actually give uh, myself, Ms. Denise, as well as our site administration, the ability to track everything on the computer. So it'll be nice, we'll be, every single sport, every single pod, will be able to see it on a Google spreadsheet um, after it's been submitted so that we can keep track of the tracing for everybody. Um, Mrs. Rubio, did you have any questions on this one? Um, no, you guys answered it right now. Okay, great. Uh, well done. Let's go to this next slide. Uh, this is really just about the practice facility itself. And coach, you just want to hit this one real quick. You kind of talked about some of this already. You know, obviously this isn't our field, but, you know, it, it gives us a good example of, of what we're doing. And um, for us, we'll have, we'll have three pods. Uh, they call them co cohorts uh, on this field, but it'll be break, broken up similar to this, uh, this uh, uh, design. Uh, those, those people will be socially distanced. Those pods will be socially distanced on the field. Uh, they'll be going through their position specific conditioning and position specific skill development. Um, not anything different than what we would do um, back in February, March, April, when we're working on individual performances um, before we get into group and team. And so uh, this is really no different than what we would have utilized uh, at the start of our practices, just happens to be eight months later. So um, as you can see that we can be on the field, we can be separated, we can be socially distanced. And um, each of the groups will have some times when they'll start together and then they'll end together um, or there'll be parts of their uh, workouts where uh, they might be doing something that's similar, and then there'll be times when they'll be doing very, very specific uh, scenarios as well. Uh, know and understand, we already talked about complete control on the entry coming in the gates, either yellow, blue, or purple, or the other, uh, the other points uh, for the other sports. And again, final, uh, there's just no locker room. We are not using the locker room. So 
that will be off limits for us until we move to another color stage. Yeah, and the same would exist if they were on the basketball blacktop or on the lower fields. Uh, those coaches will be separating their cohorts, their pods, into separate areas so that there's no intermingling of pods. And it strictly can still stay that 10 to 1 ratio. Okay, this takes us over to this an example for the pool. Uh, the pool is no different. Um, you know, there's still going to be no sharing of equipment, no sharing of balls. Um, they've got to be socially distanced in the pool. This just kind of gives you an example on this bottom picture how they can do swimming in a cycle by using two separate lanes together where they on one lane they would go north, the other lane they'd go south so that they can maintain their social distancing and again one-way traffic even in the pool. Um, again making sure that you're, they're dressed and ready to go. So those kids that are uh, water polo players come dressed in your swimsuit. There will be no changing in the locker rooms, no changing in the restrooms, no deck changing allowed. Okay, Ms. Denise, you wanna hit this one for us on our COVID flow chart. So this is our um, flow chart for symptoms. So if you look over on the left where we're starting, um, you're gonna do your self check at home before attending practice. If you have symptoms, obviously you're gonna stay home. Okay, if you have no symptoms, you show up to practice, we do the secondary check um, at the gate and you come in and participate. If you develop symptoms during practice, um, then we're gonna isolate um, the athlete, contact the parent, um, have them come and uh, get picked up, and then we'll notify our site administration and work with them to work on um, a return date. And then obviously if you're exposed to um, COVID or test positive for COVID, then you're gonna um, notify your coach. Again, we'll work with the site administration and the district um, for a return date. Yeah, pretty straightforward there. Uh, Mrs. Ruby, have any questions on the COVID flow chart? Um, I do. Um, did you mention if the child gets sick? Yeah, you did mention about who to let, who to talk to as a team yeah. or Coach, yeah, so the big thing is we really want them to communicate at all times with their coaches, you know, when they're going to be absent, when they're not going to be absent, why they're absent, um, you know, so the main thing is communicate with their coaches. The coaches will communicate with site administration, and if there is anybody that is positive or showing symptoms, we will work with um, site administration and the county with respect to dates of return and just following proper guidelines set up by the California Department of Public Health. So um, I have another question. What would to happen if, say, for example, um, my daughter is in cheer and she doesn't have a fever, but she were to start a, a runny nose? Like, how would you guys handle that situation? Yeah, so the same thing would be to, you know, communicate to the coach, hey, coach, I've got a runny nose. I'm going to stay home today. And they'll kind of monitor the symptoms. If it turns out to be like it's really going to be a COVID symptom-related case, then they'll treat it differently. And, and do understand that it is pos possible to have COVID and not have a temperature. Um, there, there's been people that have had COVID and went to the doctor and they only had like an 89 or you know, 80, you know 89 temperature and not 100.4 and they still had COVID. So you, know, you don't have to have all the symptoms. You may have one symptom, you may have two mm -hmm. symptoms, um, but to monitor them and to communicate with the coaches is the most important thing. Would you recommend for each student to have a thermometer at home so they could just start tracing from home? I mean, that would be great, but yeah, we really can't enforce, you know, and want people to do that. If you have the ability to take the temperature before you come to practice, that'd be great. You know, it, it's better to not show up and be sent home with symptoms because then you'll be put into the quarantine status. So um, if, you're, if you're not sure, stay home and keep everybody safe that way. And it's better to miss one practice than it is to get other people sick and have people miss 14 days worth of practice. Yeah, I would, I would definitely um, follow that sentiment. And, and you know, um, everybody really wants to get going. Uh, there's not an athlete out there that doesn't want to get going. Uh, but uh, we, we can't be selfish. And we can't be in a situation where, 
if we are sick that we come and we destroy it for other other people in that situation so they we got to be honest i think that's the biggest thing and whether there's testing or not you know student athletes have to be honest um uh, parents have to be honest about that situation because you know we're we're, we're all working at this thing together Yeah, this is, you know, honestly, it's a great opportunity for all of us to get back together and to psychologically and emotionally, you know, be back together with, with people, but we have to do it properly. And if anybody would put anybody else at risk, then stay home. You know, and this is just the, the final reminders we've kind of already talked about. We, we're still going to six feet social distance. Um, you know, we, we need to follow that so we're not contaminating, cross-contaminating people. You know, wear your mask at all times. Uh, unless obviously you're doing vigorous high aerobic activity or if you're in the pool, you can't wear your mask, but wear your mask when you're coming, wear your mask when you're just talking, wear your mask when you're just doing light stretching and stuff like that. The coaches will let the players know when they can take their masks off when they're doing a higher um, aerobic activity type event. Uh, washing your hands, you know, before you come to practice, wash your hands. You know, as you leave practice, there will be disinfectant um, at practices and at the um, entry uh, stations. So people can, you know, uh, hit, hit the, the, the bottle and disinfect their hands too. But, you know, let's just get in the habit of keeping your hands clean so that you're not transmitting anything via your hands and definitely not going and touching your face. Um, obviously cleaning your clothes, you know, having clean clothes at all times. Uh, do not share your water. Do not share equipment. Do not share clothing uh, with others. Just you basically uh, keep to ourselves. But let's go have a good time and, and physically participate and get get our kids going again and, and, and get our sports going again. I think that's what everybody's really the most excited about doing, but doing it in a safe manner. Uh, six, be on time. That's a big one. You know, sometimes we get a little lax in society, but we, because of our situation and as Coach McClure emphasized getting 300 kids through, you know, four different entry points and only having 20 kids at a time, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of logistics in play. So be on time, please. And that's for the coaches too. Coaches need to be on time as well. They know that, if they say practice ends at 5, then they need to end practice at 5 and not end practice at 5.15 or 5.30. I've been on the other side of it as a parent. So, you know, we need to make sure that everybody, the coaches as well, are following the practice schedules. And, and lastly, as we've stressed, stay home. If you do not feel well, communicate that to your coach and stay home and keep everybody safe. Uh, that, that's really the primary thing we're trying to do here is to have fun, get our kids going again, have a little bit of return to normalcy, but make sure we're doing it in a safe manner. Any questions or comments? That takes us to our, our, our final follow-up here. So again, I wanna thank everybody on the panel. Um, if you do have further questions, parents, athletes, coaches, uh, my email is down there at the bottom, Matt Maida, Matthew Matthew.Meda. Matthew.Meda. Uh, my secretary, Geraldine Logan, is listed down there as well. That's who you're going to send all your physical packets and doctor's physicals and confirmation pages and insurance affidavits to. And if you want to get hold of your head coaches, again, our athletic website's the best place to get that information. We'll have Miss Denise's email listed there as well too. Uh, but your head coaches in the list of sports are at centergoingathletics.org and the information page. So if you guys do not have any other questions, going to stop this share and uh, again thank you so much to uh, coach McClure and to Miss Denise our athletic trainer and to Mrs. Rubio our parent representative um, just appreciate everybody's input this is definitely a team effort and uh, in San G Spartans we definitely stick together and we can't wait to see you guys again soon so um, thanks again for tuning in and we will see everybody shortly